Welcome back, everyone, to today's edition of Connecticut Newsmakers. On this segment of the program, we want to talk about the state of education here in the state of Connecticut. And we're talking with Alex Johnson. Alex is executive director of an organization called CONCAN. Alex, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me, Tom. CONCAN being what? The Connecticut Coalition for Achievement Now. And we're a statewide uh, movement, really, uh, building support for education reform across the state. So we do everything from policy research to advocacy with policymakers, raising awareness about um, empowering advocates to make a change on behalf of kids across the state. The key word you use there is reforms, mm -hmm. which uh, indicates change. What has to be changed? Well, I think we're really at a crossroads here in Connecticut right now with our public education system. We're facing, as everyone knows, a six billion dollar deficit. Um, and yet, when you look at a number of the trends that we have in our public education system, there's real cause for concern that if we step back from making smart investments in fixing our public schools right now, we're going to be in a really tough shape uh, just a few years down the road where you know in just a few years almost half of our workforce will be coming out of our urban school systems and these are the very school systems right now that are not preparing our kids by and large uh, for the workforce of the future so there's there's a real problem that we need to address uh, and and so specifically what do you think has to be done here I mean uh, are we taking a look at uh uh, taking a whole look at a uh, new look at curriculum, are we talking about dollars being put into specific areas? Well, specifically, what are we talking about? Well, I think the first thing is to face the, the scale of the problem itself. And we really have two achievement gaps in Connecticut that we need to be worried about. The first is inside Connecticut itself, we have the largest achievement gap in the country, meaning that affluent students and poor students have the biggest gap in achievement of any state in the country. And the reason for that is not that our affluent students are doing so well. We're only middle of the pack. Um, it's that our low-income students are doing so poorly. Uh, in eighth grade math, we're second only to Alabama uh, in, in low-income student achievement. So that's one gap we've got to worry about. The other one is internationally. You know, again, we think in Connecticut that our public schools are, are really great and that everything is, is going well. When we look at how Connecticut, if we treated Connecticut as a nation, how do we stack up across all the countries? Again, very, very uh, bad news for us. Um, our eighth grade students on average are on par with um, countries uh, that we would not think would, we would be peers with. Um, Estonia, places like that. And for our low-income Hispanic and African-American students, uh, we see countries like Moldova, uh, Indonesia. Um, these are countries with less than 5% of our income. So the first thing we need to do is really recognize this problem. We can't continue with business as usual. Uh, the governor actually used that phrase um, two years ago in, in her budget address when she said, you know, we really need to take a, a fresh look at this. Um, so now is really the time for us to push forward with smart investments in, in public education. And, and the good news is that we've learned a lot about what actually works in closing this achievement gap. And there are schools across the state and across the country that are getting phenomenal results uh, in closing this gap. Uh, and we need to be really taking a hard look at that and making sure that we are uh, building support for those schools and for spreading those best practices across the state. Well, what we're getting beat uh, internationally is probably in the big areas like, you know, science and math mm -hmm. and, and, and those areas where, you know, technology, where things are going to be created and developed and where wealth grows. I mean, it's all well and good to do well in basket weaving or something like that. But, I mean, we have to excel in those kinds of areas. And apparently, even in the so-called suburban well-to-do school systems, we're not doing that either. No, and, and I think particular cause for concern is that affluent students in Connecticut, if, if we treated affluent students as a nation, um, they would be achieving at only two-thirds the level of Singapore and other very high achieving countries that are leading the world. So even in our most affluent suburban districts, we still have a real problem. And, you know, that plays out for us economically. The Connecticut Business and Industry Association just did a study where they found that 82 percent of Connecticut employers were having a hard time finding qualified people to fill positions. And, you know, we really have to focus on this and there's a I think a danger when we look at um, all of the immediate economic problems that we have that we sort of say we're just going to cut across the board um, and if we do that I think we're really failing to step forward and say you know some things are working some things we should invest in even in this environment because that's what it's going to take to get us out of these problems do you see a concept like vouchers as being a possible solution 
Well, I think in Connecticut we haven't had really an active voucher debate for the last 10 years or more. And what I see as being a, a much more promising path at this point is what uh, Superintendent Adamowski is doing in Hartford, where he started a system of funding schools where he's really funding students rather than schools directly. So he's created a system where a child in Hartford can choose from any public school in the city. And then money follows the child based on the choice that the parents make. He then gives uh, freedom to school leaders based on their performance to set their own budgets, to come up with their own programs, and so that schools that are doing a good job and raising achievement attract more and more students and in turn more resources so that they can grow. Whereas low achieving schools that do not attract parents uh, in time will, will cease to be. Alex, um, it's, uh, what you're saying sounds like a lot more than just throwing money at a problem. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you're talking about uh, certain decisions that are going to have to be made. Who is going to have to take the bull by the horns here and run with it, particularly as we look at a new, you know, new year, 2009, new legislative session coming in, mm -hmm. new members of the legislature stepping mm -hmm. up. Who's going to run with this? Well, I think the first thing is that the governor, um, just earlier this month, December 11th, got her final inputs from her state agencies. So she is putting her budget together now. And uh, we've actually, on our website, um, put it together an advocacy script um, for people to contact the governor. And, and about 500 people have done that so far. Just to make sure that she, she's had tremendous leadership on this issue in the past. And that in facing this incredible challenge, that she bears in mind um, what you know, the leadership position she's taken in the past of making smart investments in public education. Again, this is not about throwing money at a problem. It's about being incredibly what we do so that we don't step away from the gains that we're making. Uh, and then I think when we look at the legislature, they're going to in some ways be reacting to the governor's budget, but they're clearly uh, the Democratic leadership is already working on ideas of its own. And we've also seen leadership from the Re Republican caucus in coming up with creative ideas. It's going to take everybody. And at CONCAN, we're really trying to mobilize citizens uh, to be part of a movement so that that voice gets heard as well. Alex, thanks so much for coming in. Good luck. We'll be talking to you during the session and see how uh, all of this plays out. Appreciate Thank the you time. Thank you so Alex much. Alex Johnson, I guess, in this segment.